everybody, Rob Nelson, and today we're gonna show you how to do those epic slow-mo shots that look like this. To help me do this, we've got my wife, Haley Chamberlain, and Hazen Adele from Primal Survivor. <laughs> who are gonna help us walk through this whole process. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start out in the field. I'm gonna run you through some of the things that you have to think about while you're shooting it. Then we're gonna come back to the studio. I'll show you all of the different ways that you can make that shot happen. All right, let's get started. Now you'll notice that as Hazen and this Haley jump on the trampoline, they're moving quite a lot. And if we're gonna slow this down and basically take one individual frame, we wanna make sure that they are crisp and in focus. Now the only way to do that is to have a very fast shutter speed. Also, because they're moving around the trampoline, you wanna make sure that your depth of field is large enough to get everything in focus. For me, on my camera, I ended up shooting a shutter speed of 1 over 2 thousandths of a second and an f5.0. The ISO that allowed me to get those on manual mode was 1000. Now as far as the shot angle goes, I'm looking to capture both of them jumping against the blue sky. Now I will get to why that's important later, but I don't want any trees. Now on a trampoline, <laughs> where I am here, with big trees all around me, it was very difficult, so I had to get them in this little tiny part of the frame and they had to jump really high and kind of close their arms in a little bit. Also, for most of these I was not moving, but there is some neat effects that you can do if you move right at the last second, like this. Yeah, I'm gonna do one where I come in on you. One, two, three. And that allowed me to get this shot. And finally, I don't think it's really so important whether you have the sun at your back and everything is well exposed and it's bright and highly saturated or you're shooting into the sun and everybody's a little bit silhouetted. I think both of them have a really neat effect. Woo, okay. Now, into the studio. I'm going to be using Optical Flow in Final Cut. Now you can also use a plugin called Twixter, which is a $500 plugin, which is kind of expensive um, for other applications. And I know Time Warp also does it in After Effects to some degree, but I think one of the easiest ways to do it is just use Final Cut, which is super cheap, use Optical Flow, and you'll be able to see here how good of a job it actually does. Okay, now let's just get into Final Cut Pro. I wanna show you when you can use this technique and when you cannot. All right, I have a little sample timeline pulled out here. Um, we'll get into how I created this in just a second. Here's Hazen jumping. He's in the blue sky. I have optical flow um, initiated, and it's basically interpreting all of these in-between frames in his jump. And that works because it's against the blue sky, and then, of course, he jumps back down. Okay, now let me show you when it doesn't work. Do you see right here how he's jumping? First of all, he's, he's a little bit blurry, but, but kind of optical flow is doing a lot of that. And then it's taking a lot of the background and just like totally distorting Hazen. And it looks just really bad. So this is just important to know that you cannot use it in all situations. You have to be very selective of when you use this technique. And almost always, it's going to be against a solid background. And that's why when we were out in the field, I was trying to get them jumping against the blue sky. And it works in those situations. So if you don't have a high-speed camera, this is the workaround. This is the way to cheat the system a little bit. So we've got Hazen jumping over here, jumping up and down, doing some flips. And I've got this one little sequence where he's jumping against the blue sky and he's got his arms out. Let's just grab that piece that I brought down here and I wanna explain what's going on. Now let's scroll through it one frame at a time. You can see he's moving quite a bit in between frames. Okay, let's wait. Okay, now he's cleared the tree line and then let's see what the next frames are. Okay, so these three frames is what really what we're gonna be working with and we're gonna slow that down quite a lot. So let's zoom in on my timeline so we can see what's going on here. Okay, right when he clears, I'm gonna use the uh, cutter tool, break that, one, two, three, one. Let's just stop it right there. That's really only, we've got two frames. I say Apple R to do time remapping, and then I'm gonna click on this little arrow tool, go down to custom, and it pulls up the speed rate. I'm just gonna hit one. Right there, you see, and it's gonna drag the whole thing out. Now I can zoom out on my timeline a little bit to see what happened here. So there we got the jumping, and now he's going super slow, and you can see it shifting in between frames. 
right there. And I, I did shoot 60 frames a second, so I think when I was scrolling it was showing me the 30 frame one. I have a couple more frames to play with. We're now going to use optical flow to interpret between all of those frames. So this is what we do. Once it's selected, you go over here to this little drop box and you go to video quality. Now frame blending is just going to blend in between the frames. That's not what we want here. We want to do optical flow and have it interpret in between frames um, to make this look really smooth. So now if we play it, well the computer does a pretty good job of interpreting between the frames. But, but the trick is you have to be very particular what frames you use. First of all, you don't want the hands moving across the body and you want to make sure that you are um, pulled away from the background so this blue sky like this works. Let me show you one with Haley that didn't work so well. So when she jumps up as her feet are still against the trees, they don't work so well, but when she slows down and there's not a lot of movement in the background, that actually, even though there's trees in the background there, that actually worked okay right at the peak. And now it's not working so well. In fact, there's quite a lot of morphing as your feet are coming down. <laughs> and to be totally honest, there's not a whole lot to show you here in the editing program. You, <laughs> you drag it out to one or 2% rate so that it gives that ultra slow-mo effect. You add optical flow and then you let it do its thing, it's super simple. But the reason I wanted to walk you through a couple of these examples here in the field is it's really important to see what works and what doesn't so that when you're out in the field shooting it, because you might be doing snowboard jumping or BMX bike jumping or whatever, you gotta make sure that you have that blue background or you have some sort of solid background, it doesn't have to be a blue background. If not, you run the risk of all this distortion happening like you could see in a frame like that. So, just to wrap things up, if you don't have the money to get a super high-speed camera, this is the solution to try to work around that and get some epic stuff in your videos without all of the cost, but you gotta be smart about it. Thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe. We have these coming out every Tuesday. Jonas and I alternate techniques. We have just slightly different styles, so we hope that you learn something. Also, um, we are trying to learn about you as our community, and so we're giving away a little bit of gear. Um, we're doing that on April 1st. So hurry up, sign up, help, help us understand who you guys are so we can better make videos for you. If you miss the deadline, you can still fill out that form. It really helps us out. We like learning about what you're doing. And that's it, we'll see you in the next video.